Hi, this is Seth Glear. You're watching the Songwriter Sessions on RCTV. Does anyone know how to get back from here? Hi, and welcome into the Songwriter Sessions. I'm your host, Ryan Panette. Today in the studio, we have a Grammy-nominated artist who's here to talk about his music and also play some songs for us as well. His name is Seth Glear, and he's going to kick us off right now with his song, Man I Used To Be. Feel the bottom fall out, I'm losing connection. Hear the force break up, hear the static scream. Somewhere in the concrete, I lost reception From who I am and who I thought I'd be Prophets and poets packaged and tendered The heart as we know it is nothing but skin Used to know what I wanted, but I can't remember. If I gave it up or just gave in. Does anyone know how to get back from here? Back to the Thank you very much, Seth, and welcome <laughs> on to the Songwriter Session. Thanks. thanks Happy for to have me. you here. It's good to be here. Well, the song Man I Used to Be had awesome driving tones with that song. It's a very fun one to listen to. Thanks. So, um, 
I guess to start off, why don't you take us back to the origins of Seth Gleer? Uh, when did you start playing music? Who were your influences? Uh, what made you pursue music? The origins of Seth. So, well, well it's one time Skip and Joanne met. Um, <laughs> uh, the, or let's see. Um, I, um, um, I was, I guess, um, I guess really the beginning of my music started, I was a, I was a, um, like a Weeblo Scout, which is like sort of smaller Boy Scouts, like a Cub Scout, yeah. essentially. Um, were you a, a Weeblo Scout? I was a Cub Scout. Oh, like welcome a... aboard. Cool. <laughs> um, so, um, one of the assignments, I guess I was in second grade at that time, so one of the assignments was to learn the National Anthem. Um, and I, uh, I, that was my first sort of uh, exposure um, with making a lot of noise with my mouth. And uh, I loved it, and uh, my parents hated it. And um, I just kept, kept um, singing really, really loud. And um, a big change for me was uh, September 11th. Um, that was the day I wrote my first song. And um, uh, there was something about, I was in seventh grade, there was something about those events that um, my school wasn't really talking about it. Um, they didn't know how to. And um, it, was a, it was the first time in my life where um, uh, no adult had a handbook on how to process. And that's really where music kind of came into my life. Um, and, um, and it was sort of therapy. Um, and then it became a craft. And now it's kind of become therapy again, which is nice. It becomes a little bit more spiritual. You can learn how to forget some of the things. Awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Um, so talk a little bit more about your mu musical journey from that moment on September 11th and up until now. W you know, where is music taking you? What have you kind of gotten yourself into with the music scheme? A lot of scene? trouble. <laughs> um, uh, music has it's been amazing. Um, it's taken me to, to so many places I, I would have never gone to. I um, started um, touring after um, I dropped out of uh, Berklee College of Music. So it got me to Berklee and, um, and I was there as a songwriting um, major and um, I just started, I was learning a lot. Um, I loved my time at Berkeley, but um, I was learning more from Newberry Street than I was from the 150 building. And, um, and I, it was sort of, I needed to sort of follow my inspiration and the information would come. Um, which is kind of what I did. Um, and then I started taking to the road and I, I toured, um, would do about 250 shows a year. I would book myself and just, you know, um, haul my butt around the country. And it was a great way to um, not just see the country, but also like figure out um, who I was um, as sort of a young man. I'm still a young man. We're both young. <laughs> just two kids talking about being adults. This is great. <laughs> so the, so the, your music took you out onto the road and, the, and was that a, a you know a tough decision one to leave uh, to leave Berkeley? But then you know how mu how much did you learn when you were out on the road there and kind of I mean you were doing it all yourself for a while I presume. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean I think I, I actually kind of wish I took the Berkeley experience a little bit more seriously. Um, I actually wish I lived in the dorms, for instance, because now I'm 25 and I'm coming uh, I'm coming up and seeing all my peers who are working as interns in studios and they're sound guys at venues and I've I'm running into them all the time but I don't have the same relationship with them so I, I wish I did it a little bit differently but at the same time I don't really regret dropping out um, and I moved into uh, when I dropped out I moved into my parents place and um, made a record in their basement and that record um, then got did, nominated. did pretty well so, yourself and I one. got lucky though too I mean there's I work really hard, but there's there's a lot of people that work really hard. Um, uh, so I don't take it for granted. I just every day I just kind of am like, wow, I'm getting away with this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you're gonna uh, play two more songs for us now. Uh, the first one is gonna be "I Wish I Had It in Me," and then followed by our song. So cool. Take awesome. it away. All right. Because I wish I had had it in me. One touch could kill me One kiss could do me in You're almost irresistible But this is a battle we both want me to win Timing is everything I wish I had it in me 
fall in love with you I wish that I could be more than just passing through Cause I've got some work to do on myself before I can give my heart to someone else Wish I had it in me The room is spinning Stop looking at me that way You don't know what I've been through What I hold on to If you pour that drink I might have to stay Timing is everything I wish I had it in me To fall in love with you I wish that I could be More than just passing through Cause I've got some work to do on myself Before I can give my heart to someone else Wish I had it in me Gravity is pulling me down Out of the clouds Saying not now Wish I had it in me Fall in love with you Wish that I could be more than just passing through. Cause I've got some work to do on myself before I can give my heart to someone else. Wish I had it in. Wish I had it in me. I'm sorry. This is our song.
This is gonna be, this is gonna be our song. You can't hear it on the radio because it's just for me and you. You can't play it for your friends at home. Thank you very much, Seth. Thanks, Ryan. Two great songs here. A couple of a new song mixed in there as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm working on a new record, and, and so uh, this has been a, a good excuse to, to try some new things out. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to jump and talk a little bit about your songwriting. So that obviously that's a, a lovely song there, our song, uh, kind of the trials and tribulations of being in a relationship and, and whatnot. And, yeah, and what mostly makes it tribulations. Through. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So what does so what your songwriting process look like? Where do you draw the inspiration from? Um, well, um, I would like to say that it's mostly from real life, but it's but it's not always. I mean, when I when I was at Berkeley, um, I had a this um, teacher who has since passed by the name of Henry Gaffney, who was sort of like he was just my my, my guy there, and um, he introduced me to the world of Randy Newman, and that single-handedly changed my process because for the most part, I was I always thought it was my well that I had to draw from in order to write a song, like an experience that I had. And, and Randy Newman was the first person that gave me permission to write about characters. And even now when I, when I try to write, like that, that's a song about my own experience, but participating it, um, um, when, I, when I go in to write about it, um, I'm trying to get as far away from my own experience as I can because there's just so much stuff in the way especially as a dude, like the ego and vanity and all this stuff that we, we deal with as just human beings, when it enters into the, the songwriting process, sometimes it can be, it can be fake. Um, um, so I, I, for me, I try to step sort of outside my own experience, even if I'm writing about myself. Awesome. Um, yeah. So I want, I want to share with you uh, what I, a, a quote that I pulled off the improper doc dot com about your songwriting it says uh, that Seth offers a revealing glimpse of his narrative on navigating challenges of adulthood and life through the lens of an everyday person. Um, I think th from what you just said there, that that kind of sums it up pretty well. Of, of you know talking about real life experiences, I think a lot of people can relate to. Have you had that experience with with live shows of people you know being able, coming up to you and saying things of relating to you know relating to your, your music? Yeah, well, and I think that's a that's a lesson, I think for any person who's creating art, um, I mean, for me, in my own experience, um, I had a really hard time letting go of my meaning. So oftentimes, there will be certain songs that I will tell a story about. Um, but one time, several years ago, um, when I had just started touring, um, I played this song that was really personal to me. And someone came up to me 
and and said that it was really personal to them and this was why and my and it was a re it was a reason that had nothing to do with with my reason um, uh, and and I remember sort of struggling with that and kind of saying wait but that's not what I meant like I I, I think the I've learned to let art do what it does um, and um, I think the the sole purpose of any um, piece of art whether it's um, you know the English language or music or dance or uh, a stained glass window is to make the 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 listener of it um, feel a little less alone in the world and that when you when you can sort of succeed at that it doesn't really matter what you meant <laughs> right. um, it, ma it matters to me but not so much out there I'm going to shift gears a little bit uh, cool. and talk about in 2011, you were nominated for a Grammy Award, yeah. uh, which is a, a huge accomplishment. Can you talk about that? If there's kind of a unique story behind that. Yeah, um, I had uh, um, I found out via Twitter. I was watching Family Guy, and I, I saw a tweet come through my phone that just said, congratulations. I had no idea what to expect. And then I, um, my record label then called and said, you know, hey, you've you got about three hours of sleep. And then you have to get up, and you've got a, a whole line of a day in front of you. And I, so it was, a, it was a world when I didn't actually even get to probably process it until um, well after the Grammys. Um, and it was, I was for, sort of just going for best engineered album. Mm -hmm. uh, and and talk about the studio in which you you made this album. Well, I worked I worked at a lot of different studios. Um, m much of it was my parents' basement. Um, and my grandmother lived with us at the time, so she was 99. She was in this like remote control s like scooter that would beep every time it would back up. So this was the, probably one of the most frustrating records to make because you're constantly, you know, I'll be recording a vocal track and then I'll, I'll hear, you know, grandma has to go to the bathroom upstairs. And <laughs> Um, there was nothing glamorous about it, uh, but we also worked with great people along the way, like Kevin Killen, who um, mixed Peter Gabriel's So record and U2's Joshua Tree. And wow. I mean, it was sort of this iconic force, um, and and it was great. I mean, I got to go. It was a, um, um, it didn't. I I wouldn't say it was a life changing experience because it really hasn't changed a lot, other than certainly more people come out to shows. But I'm. St I was never going after a Grammy, um, and certainly not for engineering. So um, it didn't really change my process. It just allowed me to continue to bring it to more people, and I got to I got to uh, I got to uh, I got to meet Katy Perry. So that was pretty cool. Um, not bad. Not uh, bad. Got quite the crush. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so it's shifting gears again here. Um, you've done a lot of work in the past. Uh, with autism and autism awareness, mm -hmm. uh, you have a brother who is autistic. Yeah. Can you talk about how that's, um, you know, how you use that in your music? Um, well, it's sort of a two, a double, double-sided question. Um, I don't necessarily um, use it directly in music, but then again, it's probably in it all. Um, when I was when I was fourteen, my um, uh, I was just started, you know, writing songs. My dad had the idea that it should become my responsibility to wake my brother up and get him showered and dressed and give him breakfast in the morning before catching the bus for school. You can imagine what I you know, thought of that idea as a 14-year-old. Right. Um, but it was one of the greatest things that like, not just happened uh, you know, to my life, but happened really for my life. It changed everything about how I communicate. Um, and, and in my songwriting, when I... There was definitely a shift. There was an unconscious one, but when I learned how to communicate to my brother without words, it totally changed how I communicate with words. So, um, um, prepositions are, are often something I leave out of songs. I, I try to, I try to let let there just. It's, sometimes I just think there's something beautiful in what not saying says, and as much of, as you can infuse that into songs, um, I think that's somewhat makes them universal. Well, you're going to play uh, another song for us here. It's one of my personal favorites. Uh, it's called Plastic Soldiers. Cool.
I had grass stains for scars Eight years old in my backyard I played with army men in the blue sky afternoon Out of the pine trees and sap Plastic soldiers would attack In my imaginary wars I led platoons Getting colder. It's time to put your toys away. Marching orders, backyard borders. You will live to fight another day. Put those plastic soles. Away. At an army base in Cab, I was 19, kicking up gravel from the Humvee. A flash of light burst through the floor. An RPG and a metal scraped the shrapnel. Now living in this body I'm a prisoner of a war Come home, soldier Dinner's getting colder It's time to put your toys away Marching orders Fight another day. Put those plastic soldiers away. A box of soldiers from the attic. G.I. Joe's with automatics. Toys I saved to pass down to my own. He was running through the backyard Wearing grass stains like old scars My legs are made of steel and silicone Come home, soldier Dinner's getting colder It's time to put your toys away Fight another day. Put those plastic soldiers away. Put those plastic soldiers away. Put those plastic soldiers away. All right, thank you, Seth. Thanks that was, for having uh, me. Very, very much appreciate you coming on the program here. Great Just got to be here. A couple more questions, and you'll you'll take us off with a song. Mm -hmm. um, but a, a question I always like to to ask our guests when they come on here is, what has been your favorite musical experience thus far in your career? Favorite musical experience? I probably just had one of the most amazing weeks of my life. Um, um, I was asked to come on this cruise ship. And it's sort of nothing like you think. It's not like, you know, the Pop-Tarts and Spam cruise ship. It's, um, it was a music cruise um, and got invited to perform with the likes of Chris Christopherson and Brandy Carlisle and Bruce Hornsby. And um, plus, you're on a cruise, so you've got, like, soft serve ice cream 24 hours a day. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the best, best weeks of my life. And, um, uh, 
it, it was amazing. It was amazing. That, that was exciting, and it was great to, um, to sort of share the stage with Chris Christopherson. And Absolutely. I, I want to do that. I want to be him when I grow up. Like 77 years old, loving this. Um, and, uh, um, you know, there's just so much. There's just way too much to be thankful for to be, be a grown. So right on. Awesome. So um, where can our viewers find more of you? Uh, any shows coming up or where can they see your stuff online? Um, yeah, I'm going to be um, touring, doing some festivals this summer, and then I'll be putting out a new record um, uh, at the beginning of next year. So um, uh, www.sethglear.com. That's um, S-E-T-H-G-L-I-E-R. And, uh, and uh, I'm, yeah, so I'm online and on iTunes and all that kind of stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks again for coming on the show, Seth. I appreciate it. Um, And you are going to take us out uh, with your song, Walk Katie Home. Cool. Thanks. Southbound To a concrete canyon town I've been a hundred times before For some angel on the east side I would drive a hundred more Cause in my mind I can feel the sun And hear the subway sound below I can taste the water I can smell her on my pillow I may be over my head, I may be out of my mind There may be skin I can shed, there may be something divine Cause the wind is singing now to thy fog Rain is sounding like applause Walk KD home, perceiving. I keep a watch while you're sleeping. I kiss the hope around your eyes. Unsaid, I lay a hand on the top of your head. Be your reliever for the fever starts to rise Cause in my mind all the city lights are like Burning papers in the dark I think I'll board a train tonight And wake up on St. Mark's I may be over my head, I may be out of my mind Just to walk.